Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Naresh Mago and with me is Abhijit Loreng with the Evening News. The headlines. Government working with RBI to restructure loans due to the impact of coronavirus, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Smart India Hackathon tomorrow. India achieves milestone of more than 10 lakh COVID-19 recoveries. Recovery rate improves to 64.54%. Government says Kharif Cross sown over total area of 882 lakh hectares. Central government to fund 112 startups to promote agri firms. And president and vice president greet people on the eve of Eid al Zuha. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that the government is working with RBI on the industry's need for restructuring of loans due to the impact of COVID-19. The minister was addressing the National Executive Committee meeting, NECM, of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FICI, today. Ms. Sitaraman asserted that banks cannot refuse credit to MSMEs covered under the emergency credit facility and any aberration in such cases must be brought to notice. She was responding to the concerns raised by the FICI members on the difficulties faced by the MSMEs in taking loans under the Emergency Credit Guarantee Scheme. On the suggestion for creating an institution to handle the emerging credit requirements of the industry, the Finance Minister informed that the government is working on a plan to create a development finance institution in the country. She said the details will be shared after formalization of the plans. Ms. Sitaraman informed that the decision on reducing GST rates on health care and other products will be taken by the GST Council. She also affirmed that the Finance Ministry is working with RBI on the demand of the hospitality sector for extension of moratorium or restructuring of the loans. The high-level group HLEG on agricultural exports set up by the 15th Finance Commission has submitted its report to the Commission today. The HLEG was set up to recommend measurable performance incentives for states to encourage agricultural exports and to promote crops to enable high import substitution. After intensive research and consultations from stakeholders in the private sector, the HLEG has made its recommendations. The recommendations include a demand-driven approach and focus on 22 crop value chains. The group has also suggested creation of state-led export plan with participation from all stakeholders. The group has recommended that private sector players play an anchor role in driving outcomes and execution of the agricultural export plan. The group has stated that the additional exports generated after implementation of the recommendations are likely to create an estimated 7 to 10 million jobs in the country. It said that it will also lead to higher farm productivity and farmer income. The central government will spend nearly 12 crore rupees for funding 112 startups to promote agri firms in the current financial year. Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Narendra Singh Tomar said the funds will be given to the startups selected by different knowledge partners and agribusiness incubators in the area of agro-processing, food technology and value addition. He said the funds will be provided under the Innovation and Agri-Entrepreneurship Development Program launched under the revamped Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana. These startups were trained for two months at 29 agribusiness incubation centers spread across the country. The minister said that the government is promoting startups in the field of agriculture for enhancing income of farmers and providing employment opportunities to the youth. Agriculture Minister today said that the Kharif crops have been sown on over 882 lakh hectares area against 774 lakh hectare area under, during the corresponding period last year. The ministry said the government is taking several measures to facilitate the farmers and farming activities at the field level during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
It said over 266 lakh hectare area has been covered under the cultivation of rice as compared to around 224 lakh hectares during the corresponding period last year. The ministry said pulses have been sown in over 111 lakh hectare area as compared to around 94 lakh hectares during the corresponding period last year. Core cereals have been sown in ab about 142 lakh hectare area while about 51 lakh hectare areas have been brought under sugar cane. Union Housing Minister Hardeep Singh Puri released Affordable Rental Housing Complex's ARHC Knowledge Pack today. This includes MOUs to be signed with states and union territories to provide ease of living to urban migrants in the country. The Union Cabinet had approved ARHC as a sub-scheme under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban earlier this month to provide housing facility to migrant workers and urban poor. The affordable housing complex scheme will be implemented through two models in the country. Under the first model, the existing government-funded vacant houses will be converted into ARHCs through public-private partnership or by public agencies for a period of 25 years. Under the second model, ARHCs will be constructed, operated and maintained by public or private entities on their own available vacant land for a period of 25 years. Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari today inaugurated the upstream carriageway of Mahatma Gandhi Bridge over River Ganga in Bihar through video conference. Over five and a half kilometer long, the four-lane bridge lies on NH19 between Patna and Hajipur. It is being constructed at a cost of 1,742 crore rupees. It involves replacement of the existing concrete superstructure of old bridge by new steel deck superstructure. The work on the bridge started in June 2017. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Gadkari said, this is the first ever bridge using modern technology for improving the existing structure. Calling it an engineering marvel, he said it can be a good case study for civil engineering students. He also announced a new bridge over River Ganga in Patna, which will be 5 kilometers long, with larger spans to facilitate movement of ships under it. It will cost about 3,000 crore rupees. The Khadi and Village Industries Commission, KVIC, has signed a memorandum of understanding to supply mustard oil to ITBB. This development is seen as another major step towards making India Atmanirbhar. The KVIC said the development comes in the wake of the instructions of Union Home Minister Amit Shah to the Parliament paramilitary forces to encourage local products in a bid to support the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhyan. Mr. Shah had also made it mandatory to sell only Swadeshi products through the CAPF's canteens across India. The ITBP is the nodal agency appointed by MHA for the procurement of provisions on behalf of all paramilitary forces. The ITBP will soon be placing an order for the supply of 1,200 quintals of high-quality Kachi Ghani mustard oil, which will be supplied by KVIC through its Prime Minister's Employment Generation Program units in a month's time. Minority Affairs Minister Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi today said triple talaq cases have come down drastically after the enactment of the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Act. Addressing Muslim women from across the country at an event marking the first anniversary after the enactment of the law, Mr. Naqvi said the present government at the centre made it a criminal offence, thus bolstering self-reliance and self-confidence among Muslim women. तीन तलाक एक साल पहले अपराध बना और अपराध बनने से मुस्लिम महिलाओं का आत्मविश्वास आत्म सम्मान और आत्मनिर्भरता को मोहर लगी मजबूती मिली हमने उस पांव के कांटे को निकाला है मुस्लिम महिलाओं के सशक्तिकरण और उनके सम्मान के लिए यह कानून जो है वो पास किया है Law Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad said more than 20 Muslim countries even regulated the triple talaq but it took so long here दुनिया के 20 से अधिक इस्लामिक मुल्कों में तीन तलाक को रेगुलेट किया गया किसी न किसी प्रकार से हिंदुस्तान को 70 साल क्यों लगा और इसके लिए नरेंद्र मोदी का आना जरूरी था यह पहला सवाल और मैं चाहता हूं कि आज जब पहली बरसी है तो इस पर चर्चा होनी चाहिए आपने दहेज कानून बदला अच्छा काम किया आपने महिलाओं के क्रूएल्टी के खिलाफ 498 लाया अच्छा काम किया आपने वायलेंस अगेंस्ट वुमेन कानून पारित किया अच्छा काम किया हमारी सरकार ने रेप कानून में बदलाव किया कि अगर 12 साल से कम की बच्चे के साथ बलात्कार करोगे तो फांसी की सजा हो जाएगी ये कानून किया इस पर तो सब खड़े हो जाते थे लेकिन तीन तलाक पर ये नाइट फाकी क्यों थी ये है बड़े सवाल 
Women and Child Development Minister Smriti Irani also said that Muslim Women Protection of Rights and Marriage Act empowered and strengthened the Muslim women of the country. सम्मान समाज में मिलता है ये दिन हर उस माँ का दिन है हर उस पिता का दिन है जो चाहता है कि उसकी बेटी एक सुरक्षित भविष्य को प्राप्त करे ये दिन हर उस परिवार का दिन है जो कामना करता है कि समाज में परस्पर हम संपर्क संबंधों के माध्यम से महिला की प्रतिष्ठा को बना कर रहे The Union Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan chaired the 19th meeting of the high level group of ministers on COVID-19 in New Delhi today. Speaking on the occasion Dr. Harsh Vardhan said India has achieved the milestone of more than 10 lakh recoveries which has taken the recovery rate to 64.54%. This shows that the active cases under medical supervision are only 33.27% or approximately one third of total positive cases. He said India's case fatality rate is also progressively reducing and currently stands at 2.18%, one of the lowest globally. On the severity of cases found in the country, Dr. Harshwarzan stated that out of the total active cases, only 0.28% patients are on ventilators, 1.61% patients needed ICU support and 2.32% are on oxygen support. He said through a network of 1331 labs India has conducted a record over 642000 tests in the last 24 hours. This has taken the cumulative tests to more than 1 crore 88 lakh. The GOM was also apprised of the ramping up of the domestic production capacities of various sectors for manufacturing PPEs, masks and ventilators. The GOM was briefed that the highest recovery rate is in Delhi at 89.08% followed by Haryana 79.82%. Karnataka has the lowest recovery rate of 39.36%. The Health Minister Dr. Harshwarzan presided over a meeting of the Bureau of the Executive Board of the World Health Organization WHO through video conference today. In the meeting, the Health Minister asserted that unified action is necessary to ensure a timely, adequate and coordinated global response against COVID-like situations. Dr. Vardhan expressed his deepest condolences and concern at the loss of lives due to COVID-19 and offered sincere gratitude for the efforts of those on the front line. He said the magnitude of the damages caused to the world economy due to the pandemic was significantly high. He further stated that the world has now realized the importance of health. He called for greater cooperation among countries to tackle risks and dangers posed by communicable and non-communicable diseases. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Government working with RBI to restructure loans due to the impact of coronavirus, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Smart India Hackathon tomorrow. India achieves milestone of more than 10 lakh COVID-19 recoveries. Recovery rate improves to 64.54%. Government says Kharif crops sown over total area of 882 lakh hectares. Central government to fund 112 startups to promote agri firms and President Ramnath Kovind greets people on the eve of Eid ul-Zuha says it symbolizes the spirit of sacrifice and amity For quick news updates round the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR news alerts देश दुनिया एवं संस्कृत जगत की विभिन्न गतिविधियों पर आधारित आकाशवाणी का विशेष साप्ताहिक कार्यक्रम संस्कृत साप्ताहिकी प्रत्येक शनिवार प्रातः सात बजकर दस मिनट ऐसी और पुनः प्रसारण रविवार प्रातः सात बजकर दस मिनट ऐसी आकाशवाणी के एफएम समाचार चैनल पर In Delhi a total of 1195 new confirmed cases of coronavirus have been reported during the last 24 hours taking the total number of cases to 135598 the delhi government has confirmed that over 120000 people affected with coronavirus have been cured so far in the last 24 hours 1206 people have recovered and 27 deaths were reported taking the toll to 3963 
Presently, the total number of active corona cases in the national capital is 10,705. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has stressed on the need for strict compliance with the unlocked guidelines issued by the central government. The state registered a new high by testing more than 1,15,000 samples for coronavirus. More from our correspondent. Yesterday, 1,15,618 COVID tests were conducted in the state. The average of last three days testing is 97,516, which is very close to 1 lakh. Along with this, the state traced maximum 4,453 infections in a day. More than 48,000 COVID patients have been discharged from hospitals after full recovery. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has asked for extra vigilance to break the chain of corona. He also instructed officials for arrangement of more ambulances with Corporate Social Responsibility Fund. Meanwhile, restrictions will be imposed in the state from 10 p.m. tonight and it will continue to 5 a.m. of 3rd August. In some districts, administration has allowed Rakhi and sweet shops to remain open because of the festival of Rakshabandhan. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In Madhya Pradesh, Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan has appealed to the ministers and MLAs in the state to contribute 30% of the salaries to the Chief Minister's Relief Fund in the fight against the pandemic. Mr. Chauhan is also donating 30% of his salary to the fund. He also appealed to the people to contribute to the fund. Chief Minister reviewed the situation through video conferencing. More from a correspondent. The Chief Minister in clear words stated that any individual, whether he is Chief Minister, Public Representative or Officer, action will be taken if the guidelines like social distancing are not followed. All are required to follow the precautions necessary to eliminate coronavirus. The Chief Minister also directed the Ministers not to undertake any public tour till August 14. Hold meetings through video conferencing, hold virtual rallies and do not meet more than five people at a time at their homes too. The additional Chief Secretary Health Mohammad Suleiman has informed that rapid antigen tests have been started in Bhopal. This will help in conducting tests in large numbers with speed. Meanwhile, the state government is starting the second phase of the COVID-19 test drive Kill Corona from August 1 to 14. Sanjeev Sharma, AIR News, Bhopal. The Bombay High Court today directed the Maharashtra government to file an affidavit about the benefits extended to the kin of frontline health and administrative workers who get infected or succumb to COVID-19 in the line of duty. We have a report from a Mumbai correspondent. Advocate General Ashutosh Kumbhakoni, who appeared for the state, told the court that the Maharashtra government already issued a resolution stating that the kin of doctors or policemen who die of COVID-19 would be given rupees 50 lakh. The Advocate General also informed the court that the state had also extended the benefit of the center's Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, an insurance scheme, to several frontline workers. A bench of Chief Justice Dipankar Datta and Justice Sarang Kotwal, who was hearing a PIL, however noted that the said GR did not clarify the benefits that will be granted granted to doctors and nurses specifically and directed the state to file an affidavit clarifying the same by August 4. The Bombay High Court today also directed the Maharashtra government to take a decision on the representation made by city-based lawyers seeking that legal services will be recognized as essential services and that they be permitted to use local trains to commute to courts during lockdown. The bench hearing the matter asked the state government to inform the court of its decision by August 6. Meanwhile, in another development, public gatherings have been banned in Bhivandi city and Parga the district of Maharashtra during Bakri Eid celebrations tomorrow in the light of COVID-19 pandemic. City Jain Air News, Mumbai. In Karnataka, COVID-19 cases remain at the peak level with 5,483 new cases and 84 deaths reported today. With this, the total number of positive cases has climbed to 1,24,115 and deaths to 2,314 across the state. However, the number of COVID patients discharged after recovery is showing a steady improvement. A total of 3,130 persons were discharged today. Here is more from our correspondent. The recovery rate is 40.14%. Vijaypura and Yadgiri are, however, recording a better recovery rate of over 70%. Fatality rate is hovering around 2%. Today, the fatality rate reported is 1.86% at the state level. The state conducted 36,936 rapid antigen and RT-PCR tests today. Bengaluru Urban District continues to remain dynamic with 2,220 new positive cases and 20 deaths reported today. 
day. There are 37,618 active cases in the district and 1,029 have died of the virus. The district has also seen 16,896 people getting cured and discharged. In order to control the spread of coronavirus, the Bruhat Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike has arranged free testing facilities in almost every municipal ward. The public are asked to call zonal helplines for more details. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. Kerala confirms 1,310 new COVID-19 cases today. We have a report. The State Health Department informed that out of the new cases, an alarming 1,162 persons contracted the virus through contact. Source of infection of 36 persons is unknown. Creating concern, 20 health workers also tested COVID positive. Today's COVID numbers included the result of samples tested from Thiruvanthapuram, Palakkad and Kasarko district yesterday, which was on hold due to maintenance work on ICMR web portal. Thiruvanthapuram continued to report highest number of COVID cases, 320, among which 311 are through local transport. Mission. State also confirmed three deaths due to COVID today, taking the official death toll to 73. Meanwhile, 864 people recovered from the virus infection today. At present, there are 10,495 active COVID cases in Kerala. Mayusha for AR News from Tiruvannadapuram. VSM government has issued directions to district authorities, banks, civic bodies and private organizations in pursuance of the new guidelines of the Ministry of Home Affairs. The order says, Wearing of face cover is compulsory in public places, workplaces and during travelling. The state government has also prohibited large public gatherings. We have more details in this report. The Assam government has ordered government departments and private organisations to strictly follow the health and hygiene norms to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The director of the National Health Mission, Dr. Lakshmanan S, said that the number of positive cases are gradually decreasing in Guwahati city. She further said that cases have increased at some other places due to more number of tests. Meanwhile, Bhutan King Zigme Khasar hailed Chief Minister Sarvananda Sunwal and the Assam government for helping Bhutan in tackling the COVID-19 situation. Manas Patim Sarma, AR News, Guwahati. Nagaland recorded, recorded a big spike of 126 new cases of COVID-19 today, taking the total number of confirmed cases to 1,692. This is the highest single-day spike in number of COVID cases so far in the state. Health and Family Welfare Minister S. Pung Yu Form tweeted this afternoon that out of the 418 samples tested, 95 new cases have been reported from Dimapur and 31 from Kohima. With this, the number of active cases has increased to 1,061. So far, 625 patients have recovered from COVID-19, while four have lost their lives. Sikkim government today extended the statewide lockdown till 6 in the morning of 3rd of August. The lockdown was enforced from 21st to 27th of July and then extended to the 1st of August due to increasing number of COVID-19 cases across the state. The state government has also issued revised guidelines regarding phased reopening from 3rd to 31st of August. All existing guidelines would be effective till 3rd of August. The Gujarat High Court today struck down a clause in a state government resolution which asked self-financed schools not to collect fees during online education. Our correspondent reports that the government resolution was issued by the State Education Department on 16th of July. It was challenged in the High Court by Federation of self Finance Schools, saying that it is difficult for schools to pay salaries to staff and teachers without collecting fees. The High Court today set aside that particular clause and directed the government and school federation to work together to find an amicable solution on the fee issue. State Education Minister Bhupendra Singh Chudasama said that the state government respects the High Court's order. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the Smart India Hackathon of All India Council for Technical Education at 4.30 p.m. tomorrow. He will also interact with the students on the occasion. The Smart India Hackathon is a nationwide initiative to provide students with a platform to solve some of the pressing problems we face in our daily lives. The grand finale will be organized online by connecting all the participants throughout the nation together over a specially built advanced platform. Over 10,000 students will be competing to solve 243 problem statements from 37 central government departments, 17 state governments and 20 industries. On the occasion, the Prime Minister will also speak on the new education policy 2020. Union Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank has termed the new national education policy 2020 a revolutionary change in school and higher education systems in the country. 
Now moving on to a special series on development and empowerment of people in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the government has empowered the Panchayat representatives to directly implement various centrally sponsored developmental works. The government has also released funds to the Panchayats to strengthen the rural economy. Additionally, utilizing of, utilization of funds on the Prime Minister's Development Package PMDP for Jammu and Kashmir has been increased. More from a Srinagar correspondent. The blocks and panchayats were for the first time included in the first ever Friday Winter Sports Games that were organized under Kilo India at Kulumarag in Kashmir from 7th of March this year. Over and above, during the prevailing coronavirus pandemic, the panchayats have played a very significant role in Jammu and Kashmir. The panchayat representatives not only are reaching to the public by mitigating their sufferings, but also have ensured the delivery of ration at the doorsteps of the destitute and the weaker sections of the society during the unprecedented this is Sunil Kohl for AI News from Shirinagar. President Ramnath Kovind and Vice President M. Vankaya Naidu have greeted the people on the eve of Eid al Zuha. In his message, the President said, Eid al Zuha symbolizes the spirit of sacrifice and amity which inspires people to work for the well being of one and all. On this festive occasion, the President asked people to share their happiness with others and promote mutual harmony. He urged people to follow all the rules and guidelines prescribed in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Vice President, M. Vakaya Naidu, said, Eid al-Zuha is a celebration of unswerving devotion to God and the boundless compassion and love the Almighty has for His creations. He said the festival inspires us to inculcate empathy, practice sacrifice and promote peace and universal brotherhood. In Bihar, flood fury continues in 14 districts of the state. The swirling waters of Bagmati, Kamlabalan and Buri Gandak have engulfed fresh areas of Darbhanga, Sitamari, Muzaffarpur and Samastipur. Rains in North Bihar have further aggravated the situation. Gandak is posing a threat to its embankment at several places. Train services in Darbhanga, Samastipur section remain suspended. Long route trains have been diverted on alternate routes. Over 45 lakh people are reeling under the impact of flood. The worst affected district is Darbhanga. The Med Department has predicted heavy rainfall in catchment areas of Nepal and northern parts of Bihar. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi may have thunderstorm with rain tomorrow. It will have a minimum temperature of around 27 degrees Celsius and maximum 34 degrees. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. The minimum temperature will be 25 and the maximum will be around 28. Chennai will have partly cloudy sky and become generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night. The temperature will hover between 26 and 35. Kolkata will have a partly cloudy sky with the possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. The minimum temperature in the metropolis will be around 28 while the maximum will be 36. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature will be 25 in Jammu, while the maximum will be around 33 degrees Celsius. The city will have a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature will be around 18, while the maximum will be 32. The city will have mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Ladakh will have a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The temperature will hover between 14 and 27. In Gilgit, the temperature will hover between 19 and 39. It will see a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. In Muzaffarabad, there will be partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature will be 23, while the maximum temperature will be around 35. And now, before we end, the headlines once again. Government working with RBI to restructure loans due to the impact of coronavirus, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address Smart India Hackathon tomorrow. India achieves milestone of more than 10 lakh COVID-19 recoveries. Recovery rate improves to 64.54%. Government says Kharif cross zone over total area of 882 lakh hectares. Central government to fund 112 startups to promote agri-firms. And President Ramnath Kovin greets people on the eve of Eid al-Zuha says it symbolizes the spirit of sacrifice and amity. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website 
www.newsonair.com and news on air app and that is all in the evening news good night